Hey, what's up, folks? This is Rob from LearnBridge.nyc, and this is the problem that I sent to many of you this past week. Uh, if you didn't get this, you can sign up for my newsletter right on the front page of www.learnbridge.nyc. So you can sign up right there. And I can't say I do this every week, but when I have some reasonable content on there, I'll send out a newsletter. And for those of you that uh, are in New York City, you usually will have kind of my classes locally and any seminars I have coming up. So stay tuned to that. But what I was asking with the first question was, what do we do with this south hand? Right? We've opened one spade. Our partners bid two clubs. And the question is, do we rebid two spades or do we bid two diamonds? And the correct thing to do in all of these situations, whenever you're responding to two over one, you want to make the bid that shows your shape the most efficient way possible, right? As quickly as we possibly can tell our partner what our shape looks like. And we are always going to have a lot of time to make bids, or I can't say always because we're about to see what the robot's going to do, but usually we're going to have a slower auction than what we're about to see, so we'll have time to actually bid our spades again and show that we were six spades and four diamonds, and now partner has just a better picture of our hand. So two diamonds is the right bid for sure, and now partner jumps to three no trump, and this is like a, you know, thanks a lot robot for this bid because now I don't really have a ton of room to describe my hand. Uh, th this was the second question in the problem I sent out, which was, do we bid again? Do we bid four spades with this hand, assuming partner has two of them, or do we pass and play three no trump? And the key part of the question was we were playing match points, right? So with a hand like this, with a couple of entries, it looks like, and a very good source of tricks, this is one of those times where you might consider passing. And in fact, I would pass in match points and play three no trump with these cards because if I'm making the same number of tricks in no trump as I would be in spades, I'm going to get a much better score in match points as opposed to, you know, if we were playing imps, it probably wouldn't matter as much. So now that we've had the full auction and we're planning on passing, I'm going to jump us over to the other side of the table so we can play it from the north hand because north would obviously be playing this three no trump contract. So let's take a jump over there. And when we do that, we see the extraordinarily helpful lead of the King of Hearts <laughs> from our left-hand opponent. Now, this is obviously not a lead you're going to see too often, and it's blowing up the entire suit for their side, obviously. So not a recommended lead, and we can see why. Right? They're actually giving us an entire suit. And now it's our job to take advantage of this and take the most tricks we possibly can. And that's always going to start with you counting your winners. Right? And because of this lead... We can see that we can take four heart tricks. We can take two clubs, that's six. We can take the ace of diamonds, that's seven. And if spades break, we're going to take all six of them, and that's 13 tricks. As you might have found out, you weren't going to be able to take all 13 tricks on this hand, because after we take our ace of hearts, we're going to plunk down our queen of spades and get some bad news. Right? Our West player has shown out, and this is where we left the problem here. We left it at, what do we do now? And this might have seemed like a difficult problem. In fact, anytime someone gives you a bridge problem, you're kind of assuming that, you know, it's a deep thought problem and you're really going to have to think about it. But this is just essentially the basics. It's counting your winners and making sure you execute the plays correctly on this hand because you might get tripped up with some entry problems if you don't go in the right order here when you take your tricks. First off, let's count our winners again. And let's count it without the spade suit providing all six tricks, right? We can see that because of the last trick, we got a 5-0 spade break. So even if we finesse the spade here, right? If we play if we play a spade and they play low and we play the 10, we can now cash our ace and king, but that still leaves them with that jack of spades over there. So let's just do a quick accounting of how many tricks we have if we're not going to take all those spades. And we can start with the two that we've already won. And we see we have two clubs, that's four. The diamond, that's five. Three hearts, that's eight. And the top three spades for 11. So we're not going to make more than two tricks if we just rip off our winners. And where are our other tricks going to come from? Pretty much nowhere, right? We don't have any diamond tricks we can create. We, we may be able to create a club trick at some point by pure luck, right? It's not a suit we're really expecting more than our two tricks in. So the easy answer to this one is we just play our spades. We're going to take our spade finesse. 
we see they play the jack. This really isn't going to make a huge difference because they're still going to have a good trick in their hand. This is just a funky robot play. So we're going to play our spades. King of spades. Ten of spades. And now we have to give them a spade. But is that the right thing to do? You might be wondering at this point. Count your winners again just to make sure. right? You have five winners in the bank already. You have two extra club tricks. That's seven. You have three hearts. That's ten. 10 and the ace of diamonds that's 11 right if we run our tricks now we still get 11 but if we give up our spade right here and let them win their spade now we get to take 12 tricks so we should just lead a spade here right now right and the answer is absolutely not what happens let's say if you lead this spade and you're going to pitch whatever a small club from your hand and now they return a heart Right? At that moment, after they win the spade, if they return a heart, this is going to be gone from the dummy. Right? No more heart, so we can't get back to our hand, and we still have this club position to untangle. Right? So before we play our last spade, in fact, before we let them in, right? we don't have to do this right away, but before we're about to let them in, we just have to do one simple thing. We have to unblock our clubs. Right? So we're going to cash that king of clubs. So now, if the opponents, now after they win a spade, they lead a heart, we take it, and we have cleared that club out of the dummy so we can safely take our ace of clubs. And this is how we take 12 tricks on this hand, folks. We now just surrender our spade. Bingo. We knew we had to lose that, no matter which one it was. And now we just have the rest. Right? We're going to cash our hearts. Boom, 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 throw a couple diamonds away, and we just get to lead a diamond to the dummy and take that tiny little six of spades for our 12th trick. All right, so a lot of times when you get like a very bad break, you're going to panic a little bit. Don't do it. Just think about your winners, count them, figure out how many you can take, and if you can take more by giving them a trick, that's the best thing to do. And on this hand, we have to surrender a spade trick to the opponents. But in return, we get 12 out of the 13 tricks in the hand. It's definitely worth the effort. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you at the tables. Take care, everybody.